the Tibetan uh, Plateau, um, which is about 25% of the area of China, largely on an average elevation of about 14,000 feet. It represents about 25% of the area of China. It's most of the grassland in China. It's an extensive, incredibly gorgeous, but also very harsh place um, to live and to work. It became very clear to me early on that it, in areas where they had poisoned the pikas, that most of the native species of mammals and even the um, ecosystem functions um, on the Tibetan Plateau all sort of disappeared. So I framed um, the Plateau pika um, as a keystone species, and much of the work that we've been doing in most recent years, including with uh, um, my new graduate student, Max Wilson, has been to document different aspects of the keystone species and ecosystem engineer um, aspects of the biology of this particular species. And even that has turned out to be fascinating. Many of the major rivers of the world, and certainly the rivers in Asia, originate on the Tibetan Plateau, going north to south, from the Huanghe, or Yellow River, to the Yangtze, to the Mekong, to the Salween, to the Brahmaputra, to the Ganges. These rivers all originate on the Tibetan Plateau. So what happens on the plateau ultimately affects millions of people, estimated as high as 40% of the people in the world, in the downstream drainages from these rivers. So it's, it's not a small problem that we're actually co conquering, even though we're sort of more interested in the, the bio, biodiversity on the plateau, but also what happens when the monsoonal rains come, um, which happens in the summer with most of the precipitation. Ultimately, many of these rivers flood with loss of life and property downstream. And all of our attempts are essentially to show the plateau pika, its worth in the ecosystem, and so that the, we can maybe stop the poisoning of these animals um, across the Tibetan Plateau.